Hey everyone, it's me, Steve. It is January 2nd, 2018. Happy New Year again. Uh, time is 1851. Um, it's been bitterly cold outside, even for out here in, in, in Indiana where I am. It's like ridiculously cold. Um, but I'm going to talk today about models because I think there's a disconnect from, I don't, there's, when people generally think of models, you, you have your typical model and then you have a scientific model, all right? The two are a little different. I think when people think of models, they think of something like this. This is a little T-Rex I got from the uh, Field Museum in Chicago a couple years ago, and if memory serves, the scale's one to 50. You know, one colon 50, it's a ratio, uh, saying, telling you this thing is 50, uh, it is one fiftieth of the length of an actual T-Rex, all right? Um, it just has a ratio and this thing is to scale his teeth are right his arm lengths are right his feet are right it's a two scale model right and anyone who's built like model cars or model ships or everything everything tends to be just a smaller version of what the original whether fictional or, or, or real would be however that is not the same thing as a scientific model and I think there's a huge disconnect there. I'm going to read the definition of a scientific model to you verbatim uh, from dictionary.com. It's a systematic description of an object or phenomenon that shares important characteristics with the object or phenomenon. All right. Scientific models can be material, visual, me saying well, this is, represents something, this represents something, here's a space in between, something like that. Mathematical. Uh, equals mc squared, or computational, you know, uh, uh, results based off equations and math, or a CGI model, um, and are often used in the construction of scientific theories, all right? So these things are not exactly the same, and a scientific model does not have to be just a scaled-down version of the real thing. There may be many reasons we cannot do that. All right, and as long as our model is accurately depicting what we are trying to show, it's a good model. All right, I'm here. Here's a roll of duct tape. Here's a lid to a candle. All right, we are going to say this represents the Earth, the diameter, you know, the size of the Earth, the diameter. Obviously, it's not a sphere like the Earth is, and we're going to say this is Venus. Okay, now I am going to show you how much smaller Venus is than Earth and show you that they're really the, close to the same size by doing this. And I actually did measure this. This is about the size Venus would be compared to my what is representing my Earth. Now, do these look anything like Venus and Earth? No, they do not. Am I holding them at their proper distance from each other relative to their closest points in their orbits? No, I'm not. But that wasn't the point of my model. My model was to show you comparative size, which these do just fine. All right. I'm going to show you some other models that are not to scale, but what they were trying to illustrate, they do a good job on. They do a great job on. Now, we may not be able to make scale models for whatever reason, like my Venus and Earth thing. Even if I had two spheres painted exactly like Earth and Venus look, and I put them at their farther distance apart, I don't have a lens big enough to think you wouldn't see them, all right? You just wouldn't. So I don't, I just bring them closer. And I told you, you know, this is to represent relative diameter of the two planets. It's not to represent how they look, their actual shape or their position in space. None of that is relevant when I'm trying to show you. All right, so let's get into some other models because I've uh, been a little winded here. Okay, models can be pictures as well. And here is a picture comparing the world's tallest buildings. And I don't know why that keeps popping up. But um, is this an accurate model for what it's trying to represent? It is. It has your meters here. On the left is a general scale, and it gives you the exact measurements below. Now, these buildings are not side by side in real life. They're not this far apart, all right? This is just to show you the relative size of the tallest buildings. And it does that very well, and it explains it pretty well, all right? Now, let's go to the lithium atom, and I love this diagram. 
because it has multiple models in it. First of all, um, by the way, you can see where I'm pulling it from, all this stuff from up top. Um, to, if you need to find the uh, link, there it is. But anyway, the lithium here, it gives you some basic information about the atom, and then it shows you a picture here that just basically demonstrates that lithium has an atomic number of three, which means three protons, and it has four neutrons in it. Pink are your protons, your yellows are your neutrons, and it has unionized, it has three electrons around the nucleus. All right, up here. Is this what a lithium atom actually looks like? No, it is not. But that's not what it's trying to show. It's just trying to show you the number of protons and neutrons that are present in the nucleus and the electrons in an unionized atom. That's all it's trying to do. But you come down here and it shows you the theoretical orbitals that these electrons can take. So down here, this is a little more accurate, all right? So you have your orbital types over here. These are atomic orbitals in general. And then here's the one for your lithium atom. Is that still what a lithium atom looks like to scale? No, it is not. But this does a perfect job of showing you the general concept of what a lithium atom would be. All right, this here. This shows you the planets of the solar system and the sun next to it, all right? This is simply a model of the solar system to show you the relative size of the sun and the planets. Is this an accurate model? Yes, it is an accurate model. It does a pretty good job of showing you the relative sizes. What this model fails to do is anywhere give you a legend explaining that all this is comparing are the relative sizes of the planets to the sun. That is where it fails. Now, but it doesn't negate the information being presented here. Um, are the planets as far apart in the solar system? No, they are not. Are they this close to the sun? No, they are not. You, at the scale that Jupiter is here, if you tried to scale this out, you, you wouldn't be able to fit it on screen. You wouldn't see anything, all right? So it just wouldn't be a practical to make a two-scale model of the solar system in that case. All right, maps can also be models, all right? Now here is a world political map. This is a Robinson projection. And all it is showing you is the basic countries found on Earth. Now, look at Antarctica, all right? Is this what Antarctica looks like? No, it is not. The projection is wrong, but this model isn't concerned with Antarctica because it isn't a nation. It's just trying to show you where the countries are relative to one another on a map of the world. This is a better representation of Antarctica. Now, it, it's a South Polar projection where it fails as it doesn't tell you, uh, doesn't give you any distances, and it doesn't tell you that it's to scale, but it is. All right, so, so you got to remember even though every model I've just shown you is accurate, some do have some failings and they need to put them on the actual model itself. Now, where I got this from, maybe on the actual web page, it does give that information. But I just wanted to show you the image on my screen. Now, the best model we have for looking at Earth is Google Earth. Because we can turn it and rotate it and zoom in and stuff like this. We can reposition north, we can zoom in, and as we do, we can get GPS locations, our relative elevation, our altitude, but this is not, ex even this isn't exactly how the Earth looks. It's a model, it's a composite of numerous images, and as you zoom in, then you start to get the actual satellite images, all right? So it's not a exact representation of the Earth, although it's the best one we have for free online. All right?
Okay, if I keep going, this video is going to be a lot longer than I wanted it to be, and I know I repeated myself a lot, but um, I thought it was necessary to do so. But anyway, I just want you to remember that a scientific model, or a non-to-scale model, um, they can be accurate, That is, but not just be a smaller version of the object they're trying to actually represent. Um, as long as the model is well explained, and it illustrates what it's trying to show, it's an accurate model. It doesn't need to be perfect. That's not the point of a model, okay? Um, but anyway, that's it. If you want, go ahead, uh, leave some comments. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to entertain them. And that's it, and I hope you learned something.